morning, everyone. Please excuse the COVID hair this morning. It's getting a little unruly. Welcome to Sprocket and Sue's Sanctuary. Nice to have everyone with us this morning. Uh, it's uh, Trinity Sunday. And I have a little uh, piece to share with you this morning. Actually, it's from the Muppet movie, uh, Kermit the Frog. It is a, is a, a hero of mine. He, Kermit, I think, is a thinking frog. Um, he has a very introspective soul, really. Not all that good stuff. Um, his environment is water and air and light. And while well, living in a swamp, I think it might be a perfect place to be able to see quite a few rainbows. Uh, the song is uh, Rainbow Connection from the Muppet Me. And uh, I know that uh, Kermit starts off a little bit negative uh, sounding in this, in this piece, but then we find him starting to, uh, to examine his, his life, his spiritual path, and uh, then you, we see that he starts to follow his dreams. And I think in a, in a way, we're a lot like Kermit. Um, you know, we, we start off we're not quite sure, uh, feeling a little bit negative, or, uh, a lot of self-doubt, but where we're going, what we're doing, uh, especially in the last uh, couple of weeks with everything that's been happening in the States and um, the peaceful protests that are happening in, in our area now as well. Um, we really need to sit down and, and give ourselves, uh, we, we need to think this through. We need to figure out how we are going to be able to help and how we can be a part of the solution and not part of the problem. And um, I think, like Kermit, we may not have all the answers, but someday we'll find it. We just need to follow our dreams. So here we go. I'm going to give it my best shot. Uh, the Rainbow Connection. Why are there so many songs about rainbows? What's on the other side? Rainbows are visions, yet only illusions. Rainbows have nothing to hide. So we been told and some choose to believe it. I know the wrong, wait and see. Someday we'll find it, the rainbow connection, the lovers, the dreamers and me. Who said that every wish could be heard and answered? On a morning star, somebody thought of that, and someone believed him. Look what it's done so far. What's so amazing that keeps us stargazing? What do we think we might see? Someday we'll find it, the rainbow connection, the lovers, the dreamers, and me. All of us under its spell, we know that it's probably magic. Have you been half asleep? Have you heard voices? I've heard them calling my name. Are these the sweet sounds that call the young sivers? The voice might be one in the same. I've heard it too many times to ignore it. It's something that I'm supposed to be. Someday we'll find it, the rainbow connection, the lovers, the dreamers, and me. Da 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 dee da da da. Da 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 dee da da. Someday we'll find it, that rainbow connection. How's your week been? 
pretty quiet around here, not too much going on. Same old, I guess. Oh, I have to uh, shout out to Louise. Um, a while back, she gave me a, um, a recipe for hot cross buns. And with everyone uh, very excited about baking bread these days, it's been impossible for me to find yeast. Well, I found some, and uh, thanks, Louise. The hot cross buns were absolutely delicious. They turned out okay. Uh, my bread making skills aren't so bad after all. Anyway, just one of the fun things that's been happening around here. Um, shoot me off an email sometime. Let me know, everyone, what you're up to, what you're doing. Um, if you have any prayer requests, if there's anything going on, if uh, you would like an extra phone call, if, if you uh, just want to be in touch. So it would be great. So uh, don't don't uh, not reach out because you think you might be disturbing me. I, I'm here. I'm here for you. I'm and uh, I want to be able to do all that I can for you. I also want to give a shout out to the Gibsons who uh, continue to uh, post fantastic music for us uh, week after week. Check it out on the Bethune uh, Facebook site under videos. We've got some great musical uh, pieces there for us. And there's even some stuff from uh, Cameron and, and Alex. So uh, check those out. They're lots of fun and uh, beautiful to listen to. Well, let's move to our call to worship. Living God, our caring creator, we are amazed by the beautiful world you have made and that what we call our home. Christ, our friend, who struggles with us and wraps us in redeeming love, we thank you for the compassion you have modeled for all living creatures human and non-human. Listening God, Holy Spirit of breath and presence, we are sustained by your active movement in our lives and your radiating presence throughout the world. Come, let us worship, let us pray. God of many blessings, you speak to us through earth. We hear you in the mountains, in the dance of life, suffering, joy, death, and new life in our innermost hearts. You were there when the stars burst forth and you have lined, lived among us and you, have, you are with us now. Help us to care for your beloved earth and its creatures, our neighbors and all we come in contact with as we pray together saying, Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Well, we turn now to our scripture reading for today. And I thought for the month of June, I'd try something a little bit different. I usually read from the Good News Bible or uh, New King James Version. But uh, for June, I thought I would try um, reading to you from The Message by uh, Eugene Peterson. Um, here's what I'm reading from. Um, you might be able to find it somewhere. I know if you go to BibleGateway.com, you can also find that on their website as well. And you can uh, read the scriptures in just a, in a different way. So, may we open ourselves to the seeds of wisdom that lie dormant in this reading. And may our minds be fertile soil in which it may grow strong and true. So our scripture reading this morning comes from Genesis chapter 1, reading through to chapter 2, verse 4. Heaven and Earth. First this, God created the heavens and earth, all you see, all you don't see. Earth was a soup of nothingness, of bottomless emptiness, and inky blackness. God's spirit brooded like a bird above the watery abyss. And God spoke light, and light appeared. And God saw that light was good and separated light from dark. He named the light day, he named the dark night. It was evening, it was morning, day one. God spoke, sky, in the middle of the waters separated water from sky. Waters, sky, in the middle of the waters separate water from water, and God made sky. He separated the water under sky from the water above sky, and there it was. He named sky the heavens. It was evening, it was morning, day two. God spoke, separate. Waters beneath, heaven gather into one place, land appear, and there it was. God named the land earth, and he named the pooled water, ocean, 
and God saw that it was good. God spoke, earth, green up, grow all varieties of seed-bearing plants, every sort of fruit-bearing tree, and there it was. Earth produced green seed-bearing plants, all varieties, and fruit-bearing trees of all sorts. God saw that it was good. It was evening. It was morning. Day three. God spoke. Lights, come out. Shine in heaven's sky. Separate day from night. Mark seasons and days and years. Lights in heaven's sky to give light to earth. And there it was. God made two big lights, the larger to take charge of day, the smaller to take charge of night. And he made the stars. God placed them in the heavenly sky to light up earth and oversee day and night, to separate light and dark. God saw that it was good. It was evening. It was morning. Day four. God spoke, swarm, ocean with fish and all sea life. Birds fly through the sky over earth. God created the huge whales, all the swarm of life in the waters, and every kind and species of flying birds. God saw that it was good. He blessed them. Prosper, reproduce, fill ocean, birds, reproduce on earth. It was evening, it was morning. Day five. God spoke, earth, generate life. Every sort of kind, cattle and reptiles and wild animals, all kinds. And there it was. Wild animals of every kind, cattle of all kinds, every sort of reptile and bug. God saw that it was good. God spoke. Let us make human beings in our image, make them reflecting our nature, so they can be responsible for the fish in the sea, the birds in the air, the cattle, and yes, earth itself, and every animal that moves on the face of earth. God created human beings. He created them godlike, reflecting God's nature. He created them male and female, and God blessed them. Prosper, reproduce, fill earth, take charge. Be responsible for fish in the sea and birds in the air. For every living thing that moves on the face of earth. Then God said, I've given you every sort of seed bearing plant on earth, and every kind of fruit bearing tree, given them to you for food, to all animals and all birds, everything that moves and breathes. I give whatever grows out of the ground for food. And there it was. God looked over everything he had made. It was good, so very good. It was evening, it was morning, day six. Heaven and earth were finished, down to the last detail. And by the seventh day, God had finished his work. On the seventh day, he rested from all his work. He re God blessed the seventh day. He made it a holy day. Because on that day, he rested from his work, all the creating God had done. And this is the story of how it all started, of heaven and earth, when they were created. Well, may the Spirit bless us with wisdom and wonder as we ponder the meaning of these words for our lives. For our kids out there, um, the, the, the title for, for this is, This is Good. And I'm sure if I asked you about something that is good, you would be able to come up with something very quickly, very quickly. God said, this is good, after each day of creation. And I was just wondering if there's something that you could say every single day, this is good. Even the big kids, I want you to think about this. Every night before you go to sleep, I want you to be able to say at least one thing out loud. God, this is good. This is good. I think it's fantastic. This is good that we're able to um, be together in spirit as we go through Facebook Live. Uh, I know there's nothing like the real thing, but this is good. This is good. This is keeping us safe. This is keeping us healthy. This is keeping us together. Well, let's move to our sermon now. It's entitled, The Mountains Are Calling. Let us pray. God of abiding and active peace, Guide us to sustained attention and wonder towards the bounty and rhythms of earth. Help us to hear your voice and see your name written across this community of life and to serve your creatures with love. Amen.
Today is Trinity Sunday. Trinity Sunday speaks to the abiding presence of the Trinity, full through God's love for creation. In this earth-centered framework, humans are called to a dual responsibility to care and wonder. Our reading from the book of Genesis this morning shares the story of God creating a beautiful and intricate order out of a formless void. And there's a nice easy rhythm as God creates for six days and then rests on the seventh. And contained within this passage, we find that the intricate order of nature can give daily comfort and signs of God's active and long-lasting love of creation. As a child, I can remember my Grandma Powell carrying out this big quilt off her bed and, and spreading it beneath the shade of a large maple tree that was in the, in the gangway. That's that little space that we have, you know, before you go into a field if you're not a farmer folk. Anyway, she set me up there with this, um, this wonderful quilt, this, this nice glass of water, and uh, a library book, which she had signed out for me to read. Um, this became a summertime ritual that we settled into quite nicely, and I'm sure part of it was to get me from out from under her feet so she could get the work done uh, inside the house and get the meals ready for my grandfather and my uncles and the hired hands who were working up at the Salmo. But anyway, I, I can remember how that quilt felt upon the grass. Remember the sunshine dappling through the leaves of the trees. It's a soft as a very soft summer breeze gently moved them about. You know, honestly, I think my grandma Powell was probably one of the very first environmentalists, but I think that's another story for another day. But her love for the outdoors and for nature was planted in, in me at a very young age. And our scripture today abounds with ecological themes. In this day and age, we speak a lot about protecting nature. But how do we recover and begin to live out the environmental themes in the Bible and live more fully in harmony with other creatures? Would it be safe to say that if we hurt nature, that we're hurting ourselves? I believe you would agree with me and say that, yes, it would be true. Nature has an energy, a great sense of power. Nature is that solitary tree in the field. Nature is the meadow and the grove. It's that squirrel shyly hiding behind a branch. Nature is the ant, the bee, and all the living things of the earth. Nature is the river. Nature is those mountains, snow-clad with dark blue valleys and range of hills meeting the seas. The universe is part of nature, and we must have a feeling for all of this. We need to take some time. We need to take time to look and to watch. When was the last time you stopped and looked at the moon, day or night? Because it's there all the time. I know some of you were celebrating the strawberry moon uh, this past weekend. It's the moon that leads us into the seasons of strawberries. But I want you maybe, if you can, to pause to watch what is going on around you. Watch with your eyes, listen with your ears, and take a deep breath and let the glorious smell of nature fill your senses. Take a look at it as if you're looking at it for the very first time. And if you can do that, you'll see that glorious red maple, those green blades of grass swaying gently on the breeze that tiny ant carrying its food back to its home, the yellow flash of a goldfinch as it flies by. If you can do that, if you can slow down and just see, perhaps you will also see for the first time your partner, your mom or dad, your brother or sister, your siblings, your teacher, your friends. And one of my favorite parts of the day is the very beginning. And it's when I take little Sprocket out for her morning walk. The sun is just coming up. The colors in the sky are an artist's dream. 
The birds are just starting their morning songs and the soft breeze and the buzz of the bee as it floats past. The miracle of a fresh morning that has never been before and will never be again. Usually on Trinity Sunday, the focus is solely on human relations with humans having power over the earth. But today, today we must get caught up in communion with nature. We need to see that, yes, we are a part of it. But we need to see that we belong to it. And we must have love for all of it. The fawn for its mother, the lily of the valley's perfume filling her senses, the evening star or the new moon. We need to look at all of these things and not turn our backs on it. We need to be in communion with those things. Then we can also be in communion with humans everywhere, young and old alike, regardless of our nationality regardless of our faith, regardless of our skin color. We are all in this world together. We are all human beings, not divided, not broken up. We do not belong to any group or race. We are all human beings living on this extraordinary, beautiful earth. Just imagine. If we could all live in harmony with the world, with each other, what a beautiful place our earth would be. And I know that God would say, it is good. Amen. I'd like to uh, share with you now our minute for mission. Barb, I hope you don't mind. I'm taking over your job. <laughs> Well, this minute for mission, um, also, if you look for it online uh, through the United Church, uh, there's also a companion video that goes with it. So uh, take some time today and, and check it out. So remembering Alvin Dixon. And as a church, we continue to work towards reconciliation with Indigenous peoples. Mission and Service supports this work through our gifts for the National Indigenous Church. And we are thankful that we have elders like Alvin Dixon to lead us on the path of reconciliation. Alvin, a residential school survivor, was taken from his community and sent more than 500 kilometers to the Alberni Residential School. Alberni was a United Church of Canada run school where many children suffered sexual, physical, and psychological abuse. Alvin was beaten when he spoke his indigenous language of rather than English. Alvin survived the school earned a university degree, and later counseled fellow residential school survivors. He also found comfort in the Christianity he learned at the school. El Elvin became a leader in the path of reconciliation. He was a caretaker of the Indigenous Circle. He helped guide us to an apology to Indigenous peoples and to becoming a driving force, force behind the demand for a public inquiry into conditions at residential schools, which led to the establishment of the Truth and Reconciliation Commission. Alvin died from cancer in 2014 at the age of 77, but his legacy of activism lives on in the work of reconciliation. If mission and service giving is already a regular part of your life, thank you so much. If you have not given, please join me in making mission and service giving a regular part of your life of faith. Loving our neighbor is the heart of our mission and service. Just a little um, request, uh, if you're able, uh, you'll notice that on the Bethune uh, Facebook page, there's a little donation button. And uh, if you're able to uh, help with our church, um, Donations are gratefully accepted. If you are not on par with our, um, if you're in our church family and not on par, um, maybe you might consider joining up. Or if not, get in touch with Sherry or um, Linda or someone from Knox and, and help make um, a little extra donation to the church. We're doing okay, but um, it would be nice to have just that little bit extra. So if you're able, um, every penny counts, and we would be so totally grateful for any donations you might be able to make to us.
And so with that thought in mind, here's our prayer of dedication. In our lives, we watch as this universe of endless beauty dances and grows, and we are overwhelmed with gratitude. May our gifts to you today remind us to look to the mountains and galaxies to find your wisdom every day. Let us now move to our prayers of the people. God of active creation, embodied compassion, and abiding presence, we are here to respond to your call. We pray that you will lead us to your voice in the mountains, on our village streets and the city streets, and across the wide universe that you have created in love. Bless us with wonder and awe, and every day, each and every day. Please help us to use the awe for gratitude and to serve the entire community of creation. Help us to see other creatures as siblings to love and to love and care for. And remind us to ask other creatures about their experience of you. Teach us to help and not to hurt, to love and not to forget, and to embrace with joy all of earth that you love so much. Amen. Well, my friends, the mountains are calling and we must go. So let us go in peace, singing our love to the mountains and rivers, oceans and forests, flowers and beasts. Amen. Thank you, my friends, for joining with me again today. May you stay strong. May you stay positive. May you stay healthy. And thank you to all those who are our first line and uh, responders and people who are out there keeping our community alive and well. Be strong and be safe. God bless. I miss you all. And I'll see you next Sunday. Take care. Have a wonderful week.